Hello, landing crew, and welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be talking about Penelope, my two and a half year old. It's been a year now since she was diagnosed with autism. Cannot believe a year's passed. Actually, more than a year because we're in August now and she was diagnosed in June. But before we talk about that, I did want to quickly address some of the questions and confusion and assumptions about like kind of where our channel is going. I feel like I said this a lot, but I guess there's been some confusion. I said multiple times I had no issue with my kids being in videos. I just didn't want to be vlogging our everyday life. I also said that I would still do autism content, but only if it was something new and different on our channel. That's why Liam's update got turned into a three-year-old signs of autism because I don't have any other three-year-old autism signs on our channel other than Lex. And obviously Lex is at a very different skill set and doesn't really show more of the classic signs that I wanted to get that information out to parents. That's also why we aren't turning this video into a signs of autism because it would be super similar to Liam's two-year-old signs. So that's it. You're going to get these updates. You're going to get some lifestyle content. Christmas content will still be on here and you will be getting lots of vlogs about us building our house as I really want to share that. In those vlogs, you probably will see glimpses of the kids and things like that, but I'm not going to update you every time something happens with the kids. These videos, like these are more on an educational front and not on an entertainment front. That's why the kids are only shown for a few seconds in the beginning of the video. I understand the confusion. I have kind of went back and forth. And even though I feel like I was being clear in what I was saying, it might have been a little confusing. So let's get started. So Penelope is almost two years and seven months old. Old. She is diagnosed with autism and she's also visually impaired. So that was part of the thing. If you didn't follow our family back then and you're kind of confused, when she was evaluated last June, we didn't know that she was visually impaired. Obviously that did skew the evaluation a little bit and we do get asked a lot if we think that she's still autistic. Absolutely, I do. Do I think she's level three? Absolutely not. But that's all they are. They're functioning levels, severity levels. At the end of the day, autistic is autistic. So the therapies that she is in right now, she is in OT, PT, and speech. Um, all of those are twice a week. She is also in ABA therapy right now. She is not fully staffed. She's only at like 20 hours. ABA does overlap with OT. So for example, when OT comes, that's during ABA time. It isn't like they're completely separate. They're coming Wednesday morning to do her music therapy assessment to get that ball rolling and it will be very similar. It will overlap with ABA as well. She got approved for the waiver. It took a few months for everything to get settled in. Also, we're about to start respite and homemaker. So that got pushed through for all the kids as well. So life is about to become a little bit easier for us. Super exciting. I also saw some questions about her preschool and we will be starting the IEP process to get her non IEP at the end of the year. There's a chance that if we decide to put her in preschool, we would put Liam in preschool with her to see if maybe they have a morning class. I'm not sure. That's like a long time from now. So we'll kind of make that choice when it comes. Preschool is not off the table. And I think it's really important, even if you don't plan to put them in public school, to get an IEP for them because you never know when things are gonna change. And it's a lot easier to get it when they're already at a younger age. So everyone's big questions is how is her vision doing? So Penelope has strabismus in both eyes. She also has an astigmatism and she's nearsighted. Now, of course, the last two is not a big deal. For some kids, strabismus doesn't really cause any vision issues. It's more aesthetic or just can be corrected with glasses. Hers progressed really quickly. We ended up having eye surgery on her. And then now we've been trying to do patching and glasses and try to figure that out. We had a lot of issues earlier in the year of her even keeping these glasses on. Such a headache, so much work. And then her fine motor skills, thanks to occupational therapy, reached a point where she could just rip off her eye patch. So it was just a lot. We did notice that her vision did seem to get better. She wasn't missing when she was grabbing Things. She wasn't walking into walls anymore. When she has her glasses on, she'll just hold a book and walk on a table. She'll get on her coffee table in the living room. Obviously, we don't let her do this, but toddlers just have a mind of their own. And she'll just be walking with the book and then she'll stop. So her depth perception is a lot better too. Her safety awareness. She did have an ophthalmologist appointment just last week and we walked away with amazing news. They don't want to see her until after her third birthday in 2022. She said she can see that Penelope is 
being able to use her glasses. So Penelope's glasses are bifocals because that's kind of what helps her eyes focus, but they're also for her being able to see far away as well. And Penelope knows how to use them now. When she needs the bifocals, she moves her eyes down. When she needs the other glasses, she moves them up. And she was able to witness this. And she's like, that is amazing. And she held up like a toy and Penelope was able to grab it without even missing a beat. Now, of course, with her glasses off, that's a completely different story. She's doing really good with it and we don't have to patch anymore, which is great. She will most likely need glasses for the rest of her life, but so do a lot of people. Technically, I do too. We really won't know where her vision's at, what she can see until she's old enough to vocalize that. But from what we can see from right now is her vision is doing better. In February, they will do a dilated eye exam to just be able to check her eyes again. Another question is how is her eating? As for those who are new, she did not start eating any solid foods until 15 to 16 months, and it has been a battle with her. Earlier in the year, we would try to feed her with a fork, but anything coming towards her face, she would just automatically just turn her head and refuse to do it. However, if we put food in front of her, she would finger feed herself. So this was kind of a problem because most kids learn how to eat by watching their parents feed them. So then they learn, oh, I can grab the spoon and do the same. Well, Penelope has recently went through a physical growth spurt. Like she's in 3T now and she's taller and she just looks like, looks like an almost three-year-old. She's also grown developmentally in a crazy, crazy way. If you guys are like, why is Stephanie like so happy through this video? This is probably the happiest update I've ever been able to give about any of my kids because it is the most drastic update. So excuse me if I cry through this update. There are still some foods that she doesn't like the sensory part of it. She still won't touch a French fry and any food that has like that gritty texture she doesn't like. A few months ago, she started to do it where she noticed if we were coming towards her face with the fork or spoon, that good things were on that fork or spoon and to let us feed her. And so that was amazing. That was a great, great step because if you guys know, like we're still having to feed Liam. So we kind of just feed them at the same time and it works. But now <laughs> if we try to feed her with a fork or spoon, she grabs a fork or spoon from us and feeds herself. She hasn't got a hang of it, like how to get the food on the fork or spoon, but that's like an easy step. I feel like that's a very easy step that she's going to catch on to very, very quickly. Food wise, she's doing great. She's on a 360 cup. She's no longer on sippies. She can drink out of a straw most of the time. She's progressed vocally and verbally. And a lot of people ask if we did anything different. This was not intentional, but Lonnie started to get those like Kellogg protein bars. They're really chewy and they cause you have to use your mouth muscles a lot. I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but it wasn't until after she started eating those that her language really started to progress. As far as her talking, she can say things words fully. Like when she says drink, it is drink. When she says eats, it is eats. She can say it completely clearly. We are working on her to understand that those words have meanings. She loves My Little Pony and Danielle was standing in front of the TV and Penelope said, move. She can count till three. She does a lot of scripting, but it's still adorable. She says, uh-oh and no and oh no. She can say mama, she says dada. She will imitate a lot of what we're saying and she doesn't really have any functional words that she says on her own. Sometimes she will say eats and drink, but she's definitely getting there. Singing guys, she can sing full on songs. And when she is singing, she is singing to her heart's content. And it is becoming so clear that there are times I thought it was Lex. This is probably the only part where it's like, okay, this isn't good news. Receptively, she's still struggling. She's not responding to her name at all. We've already had her hearing tested multiple times. So it's not her hearing. It just might be like an auditory processing. For a while, she was responding to her name a couple of times, but then she started to regress. So we're just trying to get her back there. We can't give her one step directions or anything like that. So she is definitely um, struggling in the receptive department, but in so many of the other areas, she's doing so well 
that I feel like it would be very negative of me to focus on that one thing because she's just soaring in everything else. She's functionally playing. All those laugh and learn toys that I bought really for Liam and Liam never played with it because he doesn't really play. She goes around and she plays with it functionally exactly how it should be. Now, when she comes out of her room in the morning, she always has to grab her little baby doll and the bottle that goes with it, or she grabs her Barbie doll. She is starting to present with development a lot like a typical two-year-old. It is really amazing to see because a year ago we didn't know. I knew that. I knew that you can't take where a child's at at 16 months and make all of these assumptions about where their future is going to be at 16 months old. Like that's impossible. But as a parent, it was concerning and it was hard and it was heartbreaking. It's amazing to see now that her vision is improving, that so are other things as well. But like if she sees us hold a diaper, she'll go and lay down so we can change her. So she's still like understanding it, even if she's not understanding what we are saying. When she sees us, she gets super excited. And it's so funny because this I do feel like is a vision thing. Like sometimes she won't fully understand it's me like walking around. I don't know. But like if I get on her level, she'll see me. She gets so excited. She's like, ah! and she just has like such beautiful energy about her. Like she's just so bright and cheerful and just so happy. She's so happy and she wasn't really happy for a while. Like she wasn't a happy toddler. And so to see her personality emerge is amazing. She is still a diva and things still have to go on her own watch and her own clock and her own terms. But she also has just an amazing, amazing personality. She also imitates really well, which isn't uncommon for an autistic girl. That's why a lot of times girls fall under the radar with diagnoses. I do believe if I took her to an evaluation right now, they would still say she's autistic, but that's usually the thing is they learn to imitate really well, really, really quickly. Like earlier today, <laughs> I was playing peekaboo with her and every time I would lift up my hands, she'd be like, boo, <laughs> boo, <laughs> so cute so cute and then she started to do it herself she loves books so much she loves looking at them i'm sure it's something about like visual stimulation but she will just lay on her stomach and look at books all day i feel at this point she is still catching up on some skills obviously she doesn't really have any functional words that aren't scripting that she's using independently and consistently i can tell or at least i hope that this is right of course every kid can go by their own their own beat but i really do feel like she's going to end up being fully verbal she's reminding me more and more of lex because this was, was around the age that lex started to immerse more words and things like that so i think with all the therapies all the help we have been working really hard with her and liam and it's easy because they're usually together because they're basically like twins that we can work with them at the same time. And that's basically the update on her. So I did ask some questions on Instagram. If you're not following us, go follow us at our landing crew. I'm slowly easing back into the social media thing at a rate that I feel comfortable with. But the truth is I have missed, I have missed everyone. I've missed chatting with you guys and I've missed having friends in a way, like as horrible as that sounds, like it is my social piece a lot. I just wanted to modify this channel in a way that fits what I'm, I'm wanting. So a lot of these questions I already answered, but I will go over the ones I haven't answered. All right, so the first one is IWT. Do you still get baby fever? No. There's no baby fever here. None, none. I can't tell you how excited I am that my youngest is 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 two. Now it makes me a little sad because of course everything that we do with Nellie is gonna be the last time we do it because she's the youngest and there is some some sadness there. So there are some times I miss the kids, the kids being younger. Like I miss those moments because they go by so quickly. Danielle's in her senior year of high school this year. How did that happen? And so that part makes me sad. But like, as far as like having another child, Julie asks, is Nellie verbal? So this is where it's hard. I feel like she is. She says, uh, uh, oh, and oh no. So she is verbal. We'll say she's limited verbal right now, but she's getting there. Kalada, thank you so much for asking this because I forgot to talk about this. What is her favorite sensory activity? So Penelope is what is considered a sensory seeker, which has its own issues. Her and Liam have no fear of water, no fear at all. We went to the water park over the summer and oh my God, like it was like 
so stressful because they kept trying to jump out of our arms into the water, into the wave pool. So she loves water, she loves baths, and she feels like she needs six of them a day in any water source that she can find. Fun times. Why are you asking all these good questions? What are her favorite interests? Does she have a favorite movie or TV show? My Little Pony. That is all over her Christmas list. My Little Pony, My Little Pony. And it's so cute, guys, because we already have some for her. And she'll take it and she'll, like, make it move like a little horsey. <laughs> it's so cute. So cute. Olivia asks, how is Nellie doing with the new cats? We actually have three cats now. <laughs> Maybe I should do an update on that. We have three cats now. We've had them for a while. One of them's a Maine Coon. They're, it's like a big fat fluffy cat. Where, Where is he? This is Leo. Leo does not look happy right now. He is a, he is a big fat kitty. So she loves him. She loves petting him. So he has another friend that was at the shelter with him and they were two for one deal. And she's really sweet too, but she's not as social. We got them and then Danielle got her cat. A Bateston asked, how is food therapy going? She's not been in feeding therapy in a really long time. She was in feeding therapy for maybe a few months, like one or two months. And then we just switched it to speech therapy so we could start working on speech. She is also starting to sign more too. Nigro asks, is she playing with other kids? Is she interested in other kids' social skills? So I kind of talked about the social skills with us. She's not really interested in playing with other kids. It's like she's just doing her own thing and she doesn't want to be bothered. Honey Bee Motorcycles asks, is she stimming often? Yes and no. Her stimming has decreased since her vision has gotten better, but when she gets really excited, she still does her little stim. It's adorable. Aspian asked, how is she doing at keeping her glasses on? It's a hit and miss. We don't force it, which is what the ophthalmologist told us to do, was not to like make it stressful for her. So if she's just ripping it off every second, let her have a little bit of break before trying again. Stars asked, what kind of toys is she interested in? Anything that makes music, sound, uh, bright light. She really loves Barbie. She has this little, this little, little plastic doll that she carries around everywhere, like everywhere with her. Uh, Kirsty asked, will she be special needs preschool? If she goes to preschool, yeah, she will be in like a, a mixed class, kind of like Liam was in last year. Zia asked, has she started to have tantrums or meltdowns? No, just normal two-year-old tantrums. Like you wouldn't see that and think it was abnormal. Harfishik asked, what stems does Nellie have? So she mainly has that stem. She does still like spin the wheel of things and like look at it. So a lot of her stems have to do with her vision. When we put her in a dress, <laughs> she'll like spin round and round just to see the dress twirling. <laughs> It's the cutest thing ever. Alnora asked, do you think her hair will be blonde forever? Probably not. Noah's hair stayed blonde until he was about three or four. With us not cutting it, it may stay blonde a little bit longer, but I do assume that at some point she will be a brunette. Angelica asked, do you think Nellie will one day be able to live on her own? It's hard to really know, especially at two and a half. Cognitively though, Nellie is really smart. Like she catches on very, very quickly on a lot of things it kind of becomes an issue. I've said that more than likely Liam will need support as an adult. So you might be like, okay, well, there's only a year apart from them, but where they're at on a skill level is just so different. That's why I say she's definitely not level three. Like I definitely think they got her severity level wrong, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what's under the diagnosis autism. The only reason I would get her reevaluated is to make sure that everything is accurate. If she has a auditory processing disorder, I would want that noted as well. Penelope has been a question mark for us for a while as far as like where she will go and how things will be going. Liam obviously does progress at a slower rate. He does struggle more which is fine, so I don't know. Ashtretch asks, is there any differences having an autistic daughter than having autistic sons? No other difference than there is having daughters and having sons. Obviously, there's just traits that usually girls have, like she wants to play with all the bright pink and purple things, and she likes the little horsies, and she likes the princesses, and she likes to twirl in dresses, and she sees all those things, and it's very interesting. She is more affectionate, I guess, um, and she does imitate more than the boys do, but that might not even be a gender thing. So it's really hard to tell because regardless of gender, every child's gonna be different. Amber Lee asks, what is her biggest improvement and struggle right now? So if I had to pick her biggest improvement, it would 
be her vocalization. Not necessarily talking, but she's not really talking functionally, but she's vocalizing a lot more and her articulation is flawless. But her biggest struggle would definitely be the receptive piece. So her struggle and improvement are the same. Uh, Bethany asked, do your children wear ear defenders or headphones to help them with noise? No, it does. That is it. Thank you guys for watching this update. I will be doing an update on Lex and Noah. There's a shorter, like there's not as much to include. So I'm just gonna put them all in the same video and give you an update on that. And then I probably won't update about the kids like specifically like this where I sit down and go over everything for like a year. And we will see you guys next time. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see.